an American car is driving right into the space age. Electronics, transistors, and computers. It dramatizes the ceaseless search by inquiring minds for better transportation tomorrow. A few weeks ago, during my usual routine of ignoring responsibilities in favor of goofing off, I found this post on the r slash cars subreddit. The title read, Anyone else wish we weren't heading towards an e-vehicle boom slash global warming catastrophe so that we can enjoy V8s with peace of mind? The OP then goes on to express envy towards older drivers who got to experience the muscle car era in person, and how that's not really possible now that cars are more likely to focus on efficiency, and the fact that they're also really, really expensive nowadays. What caught my attention was how many people responded to the post. Nearly 2,000 users weighed in on their own thoughts on the current state of cars and where things are going. There is no denying that the car scene is gonna have to deal with some major changes in the next 25 years, and that's what I wanna talk about today. Thanks to Fiverr for sponsoring today's video. We here at Donut make an insane amount of content, each with its own unique needs, and plethora of people working behind the scenes, which is why we sometimes turn to our friends at Fiverr for our freelance needs. Fiverr connects businesses with freelancers offering digital services that can be found in just under five minutes at unbeatable prices and 24 hour turnarounds. And to prove just how great Fiverr is, we hired a variety of freelancers to finish this ad in a bunch of different ways. Maybe it's something simple as I need to be live action and have an animated dragster around me with a functioning engine. Or maybe I need to be a stick figure walking across pages discussing how cars go from a sketch in a book to a real life working car. Or maybe we need something to showcase my massive fear for what the future of cars is like. Will they be all electric? Will we never be able to drive our vintage patina cars? Will there finally be flying cars? So whatever it is you need to make your project happen, or if you have a special skill of your own, sign up for Fiverr today. Head to fvrr.co slash donut and use code donut to save 10% on your next purchase. Now let's check out the future of cars. If you've been keeping up with the auto industry, you've probably noticed a strange trend in how manufacturers talk about themselves and their future. Back in 2017, both Ford and Toyota announced they'd reform their operations into that of mobility companies rather than automobile manufacturers. Then in 2019, Daimler Financial Services, which operates brands like Mercedes, Maybach, and Freightliner, changed its name to Daimler Mobility. It sounds like the auto industry isn't just about building and selling cars anymore, they're about getting people around. Add on top of that the announcements by governments saying they want to outlaw the sale of internal combustion engines and companies committing to an all-electric future, it's clear that we're in for a very different era of cars very soon. Nobody can accurately predict the future, but let's take some educated guesses at what the next 25 years might look like for cars. One year from now. Some good news is, is that our very immediate future looks pretty good. Even though it feels like self-driving electric robot cars are gonna take over any minute now, the reality is we're currently in a golden age of fun cars. They are, without exaggeration, the best they've ever been with some really cool stuff coming out very soon. Within the next 12 months, we'll see the new Bronco, new BRZ, new Nissan Z, and the refreshed Mustang. All of these will have manual transmissions. We might also see the GR Corolla, which might be all-wheel drive like the GR Yaris, which we did not get in the United States. Still mad about that. My point is, these are all cars aimed at younger enthusiasts, like us, and prove that the sports car is very much still alive. One big shift in the news right now, causing some alarm, is company after company halting development on their internal combustion engines. Mercedes kind of got the ball rolling in 2019, announcing that there will be no next generation engines from the brand. Audi and VW followed suit earlier this year, and very recently, Honda announced their intention to go completely electric by 2040. Very understandably, people go nuts on social media every time this happens, and I get why. I love an AMG V8 and a Honda 4Banger as much as the next guy, but I need you guys to calm down for a second. This isn't gonna happen overnight. In every press release laying out these plans, they always, always say they'll continue tweaking their current engines for more efficiency, and more importantly, more power. The internal combustion engine is at its peak. They literally cannot make them any better without making them way more expensive. It would be stupid for them to throw out this technology in favor of electric when the EV infrastructure just isn't quite there yet. Plus, think of like the LS. That thing's been around for like 35 years. They're still tweaking it. So they're not gonna go away, not just yet. Manufacturers are gonna keep building engines for a good while, especially in places that have no EV support to speak of, like your mom's house. 
2025. Three German manufacturers making similar announcements to drop internal combustion engines is not a coincidence. They're all motivated by one, the very real VW Dieselgate scandal and how much scrutiny that brought on all manufacturers, and two, stricter emissions guidelines in the European Union called Euro 7 standards, which are slated to take effect in 2025. Euro 7 would drastically reduce the amount of emissions allowed by manufacturers to a level that is borderline impossible with today's engine technology. Critics and industry insiders alike compare these regulations to a backdoor prohibition. The EU wouldn't outright ban the engine, just make it super duper hard for any car maker to meet the regulations. This ordinance makes more sense in context of the EU's ultimate goal, which is to have, quote, an economy with net zero greenhouse gas emissions by 2050. That's a pretty lofty goal. We also got to keep in mind that the Euro 7 guidelines haven't been set in stone. They're just looming off in the distance, which might have been the goal all along. By even just announcing these intentions, three major companies have backed off gas engine development. With these circumstances in mind, here's my prediction for 2025. Germany will still be known in the US for their luxurious and meticulously engineered rides, but now in an electric flavor. We're already seeing this come to fruition. The Porsche Taycan is one of the most futuristic cars I've ever driven. I freaking love it, but it still feels like a Porsche. Mercedes is showing off the 2022 EQS, which isn't just nice for an electric car, but one of the comfiest rides you can buy. I also think some German cars will keep their gas engine as long as they can, like the Porsche 911 and the AMG GT. They'll need to figure out how to make an electric car sound good before they give those cars EV powertrains. But in the meantime, cleaner fuels, like the stuff Jeremiah was talking about a few weeks ago, might keep the internal combustion engine alive for some time. We just don't know yet. 2030. It turns out that predicting the future is uh, pretty freaking speculative. But lucky for me, a lot of the work has been done for us. In their 2016 mobility report, Automotive Revolution, Perspective Towards 2030, McKinsey and Company said that, quote, automotive incumbents cannot predict the future of the industry with certainty. This report, done in conjunction with Stanford University, lays out some, let's say, general trends and paints a picture for what we can expect by 2030. The report puts a lot of weight into shared mobility, the catch-all term for ride sharing, public transit, any method that gets you somewhere that you don't own personally. McKinsey speculates that with the ever-increasing popularity of ride sharing apps like Uber and Lyft, car sales will undoubtedly be effective, but not as drastically as you might expect. At the time of the report's release in 2016, vehicle sales were steadily increasing 3.5% per year. McKinsey expects that to drop to 2%, with cars being used for ride sharing being replaced more often. Alongside ride sharing getting more popular and car ownership declining, the McKinsey Report holds two more interesting insights for 2030. The first is the prediction that up to 15% of cars will be fully autonomous. Even though the report was written in 2016, that sounds pretty low. And for that reason, I think that's pretty accurate. Autonomous cars have been in the news a lot lately, and for mostly not great reasons. Getting a car to drive itself reliably and safely in real world conditions is incredibly difficult, and it will be one of the defining tech milestones of our lifetime. It's okay that it hasn't happened yet, it's hard. But in the same way that German luxury brands will most likely become fully electric, I predict that full autonomy will also be reserved for the luxury market because it's expensive. But not only that, the infrastructure to support these cars is a bit spotty. Right now, existing self-driving tech is housed in the car itself, meaning the machine has to figure out the environment all on its own. But it's not a stretch to imagine the road itself communicating to cars and helping them down the road. Imagine if traffic signals communicated with self-driving cars and coordinated traffic. We're in a strange transitionary period right now. As more self-driving cars get on the road, I could see self-driving function being limited to freeways and interstates only as the engineers and cars learn how to deal with the more complex city traffic. That might be happening already, I don't really know. But like imagine like you get on the 10 and then you just press the button, drive me to Sacramento and it just goes whoop, all the way up to I-5. And then ironically, the self-driving cars can't go faster than the speed limit. So you're just getting passed by beamers right and left. Infinity Q60 blowing by you on the I-5 because you can't go 110 like you normally can. I've never sped on the I-5. The final insight in the McKinsey Mobility Report that's relevant to this video is less about cars 
and more about markets. Right now, OEMs usually refer to markets by their region, like the American market or the, the Asian market or the European market, take your pick. But McKinsey says that city type will, quote, replace region as the most relevant segmentation dimension that determines mobility behavior. In simpler terms, New York and Los Angeles will soon have more in common as a market with Shanghai than those cities would with, say, Kentucky. Again, this is kind of obvious and something we already see. For example, rural Californians love their pickup trucks, but I don't see a lot of them in LA because there's nowhere to park one. So what does this mean for you, the car nerd? Well, expect even more crossovers in the market, duh. Expect more robots sharing the road with you, duh. But third, and this is not a connection the report makes, maybe expect some foreign models we don't get here. Here's my reasoning. If governments get together and enact similar emissions and safety standards around the globe, I could see manufacturers bringing cars to our cities that have been proven in similar cities on the other side of the planet. So like if a car works really well in say Mumbai or Los Angeles, maybe those cars get shifted around. All these OEMs use global platforms, right? Change up some styling here and there to appeal to certain markets, boom. But that will only come to pass if 2035 doesn't completely change everything. 2035. Nobody really knows what manufacturers will be doing in 14 years, but we do have an idea of what some governments want to do. Case in point, State of California Executive Order N7920, AKA the Great Gasoline Engine Ban of 2035. Okay, that might be overselling it, but here's what it is. In this executive order, Governor Gavin Newsom lays out his plan for a carbon neutral California, which hinges on prohibiting the sale of new passenger cars powered by internal combustion engines by 2035, with medium and heavy duty trucks following in 2045. The governor would also like to improve public transit and micro mobility, you know, bike lanes. Obviously, this executive order caused quite the hullabaloo when it was announced last year. But despite our somewhat hippie reputation here, we Californians love our cars. We've got sick racetracks, drag racing was invented here, Southern California is still a hot spot for car culture. But if the state actually pulls this off, it could have ramifications across the country. Other states might follow suit. It happened before with our carb emission standards. If a manufacturer wants to sell a car in the US, it has to meet the strictest regulations in the country, which we have here in California. There's been a lot of discussion about this, a lot of debate, but what can we actually expect? Well, first up, this executive order wouldn't mean the end of gasoline engines altogether, just in new cars. We'd still be able to buy used cars that run on gas. You just wouldn't see them on the showroom floor. Secondly, and more importantly, it's an executive order, not a law. This is just the governor directing state agencies to start working towards this goal. It has no legal binding. Thirdly, this is probably where the market is gonna go anyway, with or without the state chiming in. As EV and hydrogen technology advances, it's gonna get a lot better and a lot cheaper, and therefore into the hands of a lot more people. For example, the 2007 Tesla Roadster had a range of about 250 miles, a top speed of 130, and a retail price of $98,000. Today, you can order a Model 3 with a 350 mile range, a top speed of 145, and a price of $40,119. 14 years from now, in 2035, all those numbers are gonna be way more impressive, executive order or not. 2041. That's 20 years from now. I'll be 48, I hope, so long as I don't get into a fight with one of those robot dog things. I should make it. By then, barring anything cataclysmic, EVs are gonna be approaching majority status. There will probably still be a lot of old internal combustion cars on the road, especially in rural areas. Which brings up the event I'm looking forward to the least in this video, and that is trying to buy one of these old things. A few weeks ago, we talked about online car auction sites and the effect they've had on today's market and how certain car values are already being inflated by collectors with deep pockets. When there are less and less gasoline cars on the road, and by extension, way less cars with manual transmissions, I can see this problem getting much more expensive for future people. If you have an even mildly interesting car with an internal combustion engine, hold on to it if you can. Enjoy it, but hold on to it. There's a decent chance that in 20 years, you can get good money for it. I'm not saying you should panic and go buy something right now in hopes that it'll gain value. That's not how you should treat cars. But hey, someone might want your bone stock 2020 Corolla hatch in the future, just saying. 2046. Okay, we made it, 2046. 
25 years in the future, three years before the events of Blade Runner 2049. Will we have flying cars? Unlikely. Check out our podcast on flying cars to see why that's the case. Will I look like Ryan Gosling? Also unlikely, probably more like Harrison Ford. Honestly, there's no way to give you an accurate guess of what happens that far in the future, but that won't stop me from trying. Earlier, we talked about autonomous cars and how by 2030, we might see 15% of cars on the road being able to completely drive themselves. But as we know, technology often improves at an exponential rate. Futurists predict that by the mid 2040s, autonomous cars will be even more ingrained into our society, especially in large city centers. According to futurist Rohit Talwar, it's conceivable that in the years leading up to 2040, the computing power within our cars will become so powerful that the idea of the car will transform into a quote, always on, highly connected, self-monitoring, self-managing technology platform. Not just something to get you from A to B, but a part of a larger system, a cog in the machine that is mobility. In a lecture by futurist Gerd Leonard, he lays out the idea that changes in transportation are really changes in culture, and that every city will have a different need for transportation. I mean, we already see this in the US, right? Cities like New York and Chicago are super dense, their public transit is awesome, and you don't need a car. Over in LA though, everything is kind of spread out and you kind of need a car to get around. In rural areas, you absolutely need to have your own ride. As a result, the feel, the culture of these places is different. And as time marches on, our needs will change. And so will our attitudes and culture around cars. If you're watching this video, you will probably always have a place in your heart for cars, but your kids and grandkids might not. And that's how change happens. While the future may be scary, fate is not set in stone. It probably won't even be five years before a prediction I make in this video is hilariously out of date and very, very wrong. So relax and enjoy the cars we have right now because that's all we really have control over. Also, the GRRs will be legal to import in 25 years. So set yourself a reminder. Siri, set a reminder 25 years from now, buy a Toyota GR Yaris. Okay, added. Thank you. Hey, if you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button. Consider subscribing to our channel. We put out dope videos like this nearly every day. I'm optimistic for the future. I think the advancing technology is really sick. These electric cars, I've driven a few of them, they haul ass and that's all that matters to me. They're sick. Follow Donut Media on all social media at Donut Media a lot of media. Follow me at Nolan J. Sykes. I take pictures sometimes. Be kind, take care of each other, hold on to your cool car. See you next time.